Welcome to the My Fence Life bonus podcast series, Ask Me About My Day, where you can eavesdrop on phone conversations between Dan, industry leaders, and fencers from around the country to find out about their day. Hey, what's happening, Fence Lifers, man? We got a, another great show for you. We're bringing back last week's uh, Ask Me About My Day from, uh, I think it was episode 108. Um, this is episode 109. We're going to have to do a part two on finding the right fit. When to hire a business consultant or a business coach. Uh, our guest today, he's a CEO and founder of Nextel. Uh, Nextel, man. Next level. How did I come up with Nextel? That's all them years in the damn cell phone industry that I've been in. Uh, Next Level Solutions. This guy was a headhunter for multi-billion dollar uh, construction companies looking for uh, senior project managers, engineers, all that good stuff. He's built hotels, condos. Um, he's been in the construction industry for 15 plus years, and he was one of the OGs, one of the original job Nimbus guys. Uh, he also created a professional services division and he used to go out on site. I think he did like uh, 15 states, 35 cities, something like that, where he went into different companies, set up the CRMs. Um, yeah. And he just, you know, made people heroes. That's what job Nimbus does. Right. So let's go ahead. We're going to bring Ryan on and, uh, see how he's doing today, man. Ryan, what's happening, brother? What's up, Dan? How are you today, man? Oh, same old, same old, man. So uh, last week we covered a lot. You know, I was looking over our notes and uh, we went over a bunch of different questions. You know, you know, are we struggling to acquire new customers and generate leads? Do we lack clear business strategy and vision? Are we struggling with time management? And uh, is our profit margin lower than we would like it to be? And I think we also... Uh, talked about diversifying and stuff like that and how a business coach helps you on all those items. And we didn't get to some of the light items on our list. So let's just dive right on in, man. You ready? I'm ready, man. <clears throat> so what you got? What's our first question we should be asking ourselves, Ron? Uh, you know, just talking to talking to people in the industries and working with them, uh, I think one of the biggest things struggles that people have is 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 employee turnover is is too high, um, and uh, trying to retain uh, talent, and uh, I think that's a a really um, that's a really strong question because people do struggle with that. How do I know if I'm hiring the right people? How do I know if I'm if I'm going to retain them? Those types of things. Yeah, I mean, employee retention is, is, is a challenge, you know, and I've found that, you know, having a consultant, they can assist in creating a positive company culture, implementing employee development programs, you know, stuff like that, man. It's it's crazy the stuff that they bring to the table that we don't think about. Um, improving communication with my guys to to do, uh, to boost, you know, satisfaction and morale and stuff. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's a big thing, man. You know, trying to keep your guys and, and keep them wanting to come to work. Yeah, huh. it, it, it is. It is a big deal. And, uh, you know, uh, we do a really good job, man. Greg, uh, Greg, he's he's a consultant for me and he does a really good job. And really, and truly, you know, understanding your people, um, if we had to break that down, is is understanding people's personality. How, how do they process information? How do they, um, you know, how do they receive information? Um, and, and so understanding the people is, is a big deal. And then, you know, and then once you know that you have the right personality, man, it's like taking an A type personality, uh, someone that's very analytical, trying to fit them into sales. It don't, you know, that don't fit. Um, but if you take an analytical person that's good with numbers and you put them in accounting, well, now they're sitting in the right seat and, right. and, and you know, it makes them happy. And, and so it's important Yeah, you know, we did, we did that at job Nimbus, man. That was one thing that was very powerful, um, is just making sure you have the right people sitting in the right seat and developing that right culture, because it's something that, that where people want to come to work. It's not like I've got to go to work today. It's like, I can't wait to get there because it's so much fun um, in, in that process. And, and I'll just tell you this, um, retaining people, 
when you're thinking about retaining people, the best way to retain them is to onboard them correctly. And, and it's been my experience that if you don't have an onboarding process, uh, what does day one look like? What does day two look like? Um, are you giving them the right tools? Are you just like throwing them out there and hope they get it or um, to see if they're going to stick or not? Um, them trying to figure things out. So onboarding people the right way is going to help to retain them because they understand the systems. They understand the processes, the protocols. They understand all those things. Well, you know, one of the things that I've learned, too, is is you have a guy that's working for you or a lady that's working for you and all of a sudden they get married or um, they get in a serious relationship. So or, or they have a baby. Right. <laughs> and you start learning that you have to kind of teeter on or, or change directions on how you deal with that guy or that or that or that gal, because now they're they got something else going on in their life. Yeah. And maybe they can't give the attention that they used to give, but they're still great to have on the team, you know? So the, that's, that's another thing that that's difficult to deal with. You know, you got a guy that's been single and he's, you know, do anything and anything he wants. And he stay, he stays late, comes in early, he'll work weekends. And all of a sudden I can't work weekends anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, and well, and then, you know, uh, too, man, change is for some people, change is hard, you know, to, to be able to pivot, you know, to be able to, to shift. Um, you know, some people don't know how to do that very well and they don't know how to adapt very well. Um, and, and, and when we're talking about retaining people and you said something there that triggered this thing in my head is there's a difference between uh, an employee and entrepreneurship. And I think it's important that, that every team member feels like they own that company because they can, they can actually, when I say own it, they take ownership in it. They take ownership in their, in what they do and their work. They take ownership, the pride in that they're taking ownership of taking care of the customers, you know? Um, so if people are, when people are, you're hiring people or interviewing people, um, are they looking for a job? Are they looking for a chance to, to have a career and, and take ownership in what they do? Um, and that's how you retain people, man. People just want a job. The next time something comes up and they're going to make a little bit more money, they're going to be out. But someone yeah. that's looking for a career and they can have they feel like they're about, hey, I part own this company um, and, and I'm going to make sure I take care of that baby. So it's, it's a different mindset. Totally. Yeah. You know, another question we should be asking ourselves is, is, you know, are we facing challenges? managing our cash flow and our finances that's another question you should ask yourself yeah if you're saying hey do i need a business consultant do i need a business coach well you know are, are you facing these challenges a business consultant can offer financial expertise to help the company manage their cash flow effectively they can help you review financial statements but talk about a big deal i still don't have a grasp on balance sheets man I got the P and L's down, but the balance sheets, I'd scratch my head. I'm like this asset stuff, this the liabilities, uh, liabilities. Yeah. I'm like, and then they're like, Oh, well we can put that in, uh, in liabilities. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man. I just can't grasp it. I gotta, I gotta get my shit together on balance sheets, but that's why I got Ryan. I'm like, Hey bro, yeah. how's the balance sheet look? <laughs> well, and, but, you know, when you're looking at the cash flow and you're looking at, you know, that that's so important, man, and understanding those PLs and understanding those balance sheets um, and knowing, you know, are we spending too much money in, in certain areas um, and being able to go pull those financials and understanding that because, I mean, that the cash flow is, is kind of keen in, 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 in what, what has been my experience in the construction industry, Dan, is a lot of times they're, they're, they're robbing Peter just to pay Paul. In other words, what I mean by that, you know, because of their cash flow crunch and because they're, they're not making enough profit off of the jobs, you know, it's one of those things to where, Hey, I, I got to go sell another job just to go pay for the previous job. Yeah. And then I'll, sudden now you're robbing peter to pay paul and then then eventually it's going to catch up to you you know hey i've been there man i've been there and it's not a good feeling it's not a good feeling at all i've been there i made some bad choices in that and, and now that uh now that i have some help he um you know ron's helping me implement budgeting stuff and forecasting um yeah. you know it's we're wanting to do some expansion matter of fact we had our monday morning meeting and um uh, the guy's like, hey, when, when are we expanding the yard? I'm like, whoa, slow down, slow down. 
you know, uh, well, all we got to do, you know, we could come in on a Saturday. I'm like, no, no, it, it doesn't work that like that. First of all, we got a lease coming up, so let's make sure our lease is going to renew first right? Yeah. before we start doing any expansion. Let me work that deal out. Then on top of that, we need to look at our P&Ls and see if we're spending some money where we shouldn't be spending it. We need to see if we need to cut back in some places. We need to forecast what our sales look like. We need to look at the market trend and what's going on. And the guys in the meeting are looking at me like, uh, and I'm like, that's why I run the business. And that's why y'all build fence because it's the seat that we are in the bus and I'm right. not driving the bus guys. You think that I'm driving this bus? I'm not. It just so happens. I'm sitting in the seat right behind the driver. Yeah, and, it, it, and it's probably because I'm in trouble because I wasn't doing the shit I was supposed to be doing. You know, when you get in trouble on the bus, you got to sit right behind the bus driver. That's where I sit because yeah. that bus driver calls me and emails me and walks him off. It's like, hey, what the hell's going on? And, you know, so he's driving. Now, my job is, is to make sure that all the right butts are in the right seats on that bus. And that's you know? that's yeah, that's that's you know, that's they, that's a good point. And that is very, very critical. And when you're looking at, at people <clears throat> budgets and, and we do, a, you know, next level does a good job <clears throat> at doing the forecasting. And because, you know, looking at the different we, in the uh, last uh, episode that we did, uh, we were talking about adding different services on there. Well, you know, that's extremely important um, to be able to look at those things to see, to make sure that what you're adding in those services, the profit margins moving forward and, and all of those things, all this stuff ties together uh, when you're looking at how you're going to operate the business and and looking at if the profitability and stuff. You know, we talked about that in the last episode. So all this comes hand in hand. It does, man. And look, it's gotten to the point to where uh, the other night me and Pepper went to dinner with uh, consult Ron and his wife. And uh, Pepper was talking about, I want a new car. And I was like, I looked at Ryan and Ryan goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you can get a new car. And I just, my eyes got big and she's like, I can get a new car. I'm like, he's joking, baby. You're not getting a new car right now. Calm down. <laughs> yeah. But it's no. so funny. It's like I'm looking at I'm looking at Ron, but she knows before she gets a new car, I'm going to, hey, Ron, Pepper wants a new car. This is what we're looking at. You know, how, how, how's business looking? What are we going to do? What are we forecasting? And because I have to, I have to adjust my personal expenses off of what the business is doing. Because if the economy crashes, then guess what? I might not be able to take a paycheck to keep the company going until we get out of that recession. And right. those, are the time, those are the kind of things business owners have to do. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, sometimes business owners, um, they, they make a bad choice to where they try to live out of the business instead of oh, setting yeah. stuff up to where they're paying themselves to your point, to where they're drawing a check just like everybody else is. And they think that once they start seeing the money flow through the account, they think, Oh man, I got all of this money. And, <laughs> uh, and they, and they, re and they really don't because, you know, it's, it's going for other things, but, you know, looking at that forecasting and, and looking at the actuals is so important because, you know, people, you know, tracking your estimates, you know, well, what do we have in the pipeline? You know, m watching that pipeline and keeping that pipeline full because now you can now you can look at projections. You can mm -hmm. forecast based off of those projections because of the amount of estimates you got in there. So you kind of know, hey, I've got one point two million dollars sitting over in the estimates. And, and a lot of times people don't really understand, well, which leads should I be working? Well, you know, which ones can I close faster and those types of things. So I do feel it's very, very important in, in doing all of those things to, and that will help with the, the cash flow um, issues and stuff like that. It will. Guys, another question we should be asking ourselves, do we need to improve customer satisfaction and enhance customer oh. experience, man? It's, you know, a, a coach can, can guide you in that and, they can assist you in developing customer service protocols and, and obtaining that feedback and implementing improvements based on, on, on customer insights. You know, you know one, of, one of the truest forms to know whether you have the truest feedback you can get is from a customer satisfaction. That is one metric 
that you can that you, that can be driven by the customers, the people that are paying you, the people that are keeping you in business, that feeds your family, and um, you know, and and man, do is that's probably one of the biggest things I've out of all the things that we're talking about and making sure that that we take care of those customers and um, and making sure that they have a great experience, and then then getting that feedback. Um, sometimes we don't want to hear that feedback because truth can sometimes hurt. But, um, but man, when you get that honest feedback, that's what makes you grow. That's what makes you move forward because, you know, you, you never win when you have a customer that gets upset and they don't even tell you about it, but they're going to go tell at least 15 to 20 other people, their friends, Hey, you don't want to do use this person. And a lot of times by, by not staying on top of that customer and following up, man, follow up is huge uh, in these industry. And, and I have different levels of things that people struggle with. And, and that's one of them is follow up. They leave so much money on the table because they don't follow up. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about job Nimbus with their automations. We do some crazy follow ups, man. We're, yeah. we're following up with people. I've literally sold jobs that were 220 plus days out because of follow-ups. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Um, you know, and, and when we're, and I know this is not necessarily on the questions, but if, if people had these keys and they understand these keys, the number one problem, and you heard me say this back in Utah and I'll, I'll just repeat it here is worth saying, and it has held true my entire career. The number one problem most people face is commuting communication breakdown. That's number one. Um, poor expectations. Um, you know, they, they go out and do a really good job of selling it, but then they don't follow up behind the scenes and the customer's expectations. And then number three is follow up, man. Follow, not having the right follow up and not having the right places to where you are following up is huge. Um, and then visibility. If you don't have visibility into your company, into your people, it's not even just about the processes and not having that visibility. Um, it all the things that we're talking about right now, it, it can affect the business. Yeah. Um, man, I had, uh, I had Ron bring that to my, to my attention. He's like, you can like customer satisfaction. You can, you can, you can test that off of, uh, off of your, uh, Google reviews. Yes. You know, that's yeah. a, that's a great way to do it. You know? it, it is the getting those reviews. That's a nice way to have a health you know, a health score too, you know, just knowing the health of your customers, knowing the health of your employees um, and customer satisfaction is, a, is the way to go. And there's, and there's partners out there that I've partnered up with that have um, some really good platforms for you to be able to do that as well. Oh. So what's another question we should be asking ourselves, man? Um, you know, what about one of the things I hear people say a lot is, uh, are we struggling to keep up with the industry trends and innovations? Um, and I would say, yeah, to, to that. I think that's, uh, you know, we get so focused on what we do that sometimes we have these blinders on and we don't pay attention to what the industries are. Um, we don't stay up with education. We don't stay up with training, um, staying on top of, you know, being the best at what we can do in the industries with all the new techniques out there, man. Um, so, so a lot of times people say, Hey, I've been doing this for 25 years and they, and they've been successful that way, but you got a younger generation that's coming in to learn how that they can use different techniques and new systems and new product, um, that that's going to get a hand up on, on the, if you're not careful, I think that's a, that's a question that I've had. Yeah, that's, um, you know, one of the ways that you can, say hey are we struggling to keep up with our industry trends or innovations is maybe you don't have the money to buy the products or the software or the tools that you need and what does that go back to that goes back to one of our other questions about are are, are we are our profit margins correct yeah because and forecasting and that's something that you know i hear uh sean king mention that hey put it in the budget you got a budget for it then yep. once you budget, now you have a goal every month to reach. And if you're not reaching that goal, well, something comes out of the budget. And it it just works, man. It's it's yeah. <laughs> everything's driven by that margin, though. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I mean, because with without the right margins, because you know, and, and 
thing about it is, is when you're looking at industry trends and stuff is sometimes they don't see the value. Um, and, and that's where they're making their mistake because uh, to your point of the gross profit margins, but that turns into the cash flow. Um, but sometimes, you know, even if they have the cash flow, they're like, well, I don't see the value in going to learn. And if you ever get, if you ever put the mindset that you have arrived, you're going to get left behind. Well, I'll tell you one of the, I, I mean, I struggled with that. So yeah. for 20 years, I was buying one man augers, right? They did great. They did the job, run about a thousand bucks. Life is good. Well, no, Dan, you really should buy one of these uh, little beavers that cost four or five thousand dollars. I was like, I don't see the value in that. We're rocking and rolling with one man augers, right? Well, uh, consult Ron said, "Hey, you need to buy two of those. Get rid of those one mans. You're gonna uh, you're gonna kick some ass and take names with those." So I did it. Didn't want to do it. Did it. Now I swear by them. Now I'm going. Maybe I should get a mini skidder, a uh, mini skidster, with an auger on it. You know, because yeah. that's gonna blow the little beaver out the water. So he's he's opened my eyes to some things that I normally would have rejected or wouldn't have even considered. But when you got that bus driver, you know, telling yeah. you, hey, if you want this bus to get to the next stop, you're going to have to do this. You know, you would know, you rather would you rather ride on the bus or push the bus, Dan? I said, well, I want to ride. OK, well, then this is what you need to do to get to the next stop. Yeah. You know, he, he's right about that. And a lot of times, you know, you, we'll, we'll use this as an example as well. You know, would you rather use Poso diggers? Or would you rather have a piece of equipment that can dig the holes faster? Which one's more efficient? You know, right. uh, you know, then you're looking that way. Now you're, Hey, I can do twice the amount of fence by having the right equipment versus me sitting here all day and do it. You're going to build some muscles up, but you know, but it's just not efficient anymore. You know, when, especially when you got tools out there that can help you to be more efficient, better organized. Um, it, it's just critical. Well, then not only that, that guy that's on that post hole digger every day, he's only going to be able to work like that for so many years. Oh, yeah. And here he is. He's a loyal, he's, he's loyal to the brand, right? He's a key team player. And don't you want him to be able to be in that role longer? Would it make his job easier? Absolutely. And that's the investment. You know, uh, a lot of times as a business owner, if you, if you look at something, hey, well, this is costing me money. Well, you got the wrong mindset because you, you've got to be able to make investments into your company. You're making an investment into yourself. You're making investments into the company to reap the reward that's going to come back. You're, you're making an investment in your people. Um, you know, if, if people can figure that out in business, if they will invest in their people and give them the right tools that they need, then that, re then that ROI is going to come back over, over a period of time. Yeah. That ROI, that return on your investment is a big deal. Really yeah. is. So, man, you know what we're gonna have to do? I'm gonna have to get a link on my uh, in my all my descriptions, the link to to uh, Next Level Solutions, so people can find y'all. Because I didn't yeah. even ask you how to uh, how do we find Ronnie Smith? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go to uh, www dot next level and it's uh, NXT LVL Solutions Inc.com. And uh, there's forms that you can go and fill out. And, and we actually offer a uh, free uh, business assessment, you know, um, a consultation uh, that you can call in. So so we love to would love to hear from you and learn how how we can potentially help you and uh, to learn more about your businesses. Man, all these businesses with no vials. So I got uh, old Shane Catton, old Miller Light drinking Shane Catton's got. Uh, mm -hmm. Midwest Fence Supply, and that's Midwest with no vials. M D W S T. Now uh, we got Next Level Solutions. Next Level, no vials. What's up with these vials, man? Just, because it just shortens the word. Nah, man, it's a <laughs> it's a brand. It really is a branding thing, you know. It is. I don't know if you've ever go if you ever go really on like research next like Next Level, just a word. Oh my gosh, it just pulls up thousands of Next Level stuff. Um, but uh, one thing I did find out, there wasn't a lot of people that spelled it NXTLVL. And uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to find us. Yeah, y'all going to be a Wheel of Fortune nightmare in the future. 
<laughs> I'd like to buy an A. No, no A's. I like to buy an E. No E's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's true. I hadn't thought about it, but that's true. All right, man. Another question. Do we want to enhance leadership skills and team performance? We've covered a little bit of that already. You know, a, a business yeah. coach, they, they, they can work with the company's leadership to improve their skills, their effectiveness. Uh, they can help develop training, yeah. team building exercises, uh, motivate the work environment. They do all those things, man. They help you with those things. And it's nice to have somebody come to the table and go, hey, here you go. This is what you need to do. Boom. And hand it to you. Instead of you trying to figure it out it, and it trying does. to figure out how it to does. implement it. You yeah. know? It's a big deal. How do y'all handle that over at yeah, Next Level? It, um, we definitely do that. And the way that we handle that is there there again, you know, we we can go out to, to businesses and we spend like three di days with them, man. And, and we work on um, different parts of that, you know, everything from the disassessments, everything from the forecasting and the projections, but the team building is in the core leadership. Um, that's huge, man. And, and being able to train, I had, matter of fact, we had a, a, a client called and they said like, Hey, all of our people are, are so new that we don't really know how to, to lead, you know, it's not something that we're used to. And so, um, so we developed a, a training uh, modules just for, for management um, to, to how to communicate to your team, um, how to lead effective meetings. Um, every meeting is not effective, you know, and then um, the metrics, you know, everybody wants to know, hey, am I really doing as good as I think I am? So establishing the right metrics for your teams and and the accountability to that, it's just, it's huge, Dan. And a lot of times people don't do it and they don't meet, you know, it's not that you want a meeting to have a meeting on top of meetings, but there are um, strategic meetings that core leadership that should be having because you can find out within a matter of just minutes the health of, of your team, your, your company, um, and there are ways to be able to do that. And, and just, just to start out is the communications and setting up uh, meetings with your teams on a weekly basis. Well, guys, that was some good stuff, man. I think uh, some of the things that I've learned today is that a, uh, a business coach can help you gain clarity in, yeah. in specific areas where, you know, you, you might not think you can benefit, but you can benefit from their, from their external guidance, you know, and, and they, they can help you play a vital role in, in, in helping you address challenges and improve your operations and achieve the growth that you want in your industry. So if you're uh, considering a fence coach, I mean, a fence coach, a business coach, business consultant, you need to go back. Listen to ask me about my day 108. Listen, re listen to this one 109 and ask yourself those questions and see what the answers are. And if the answers are like, Yeah, I need some help in these areas, I think you should be exploring that. You know, and what I like about Next Level Solutions and the reason why I got Ronnie on here is because they're not industry specific. You know, there's pros and cons to that. And one of the pros I think to Ronnie having experience in all types of different construction and in different types of businesses, he can bring to the table the knowledge that he's having from all those different industries. You know, if he's being a business coach for a plumber and he's being a business coach for a, a, a cleaners and he's being a, you know, whatever, it, whatever it might be, he's getting all this information from all these different markets and he can get a whole lot better feel for what's happening with the economy and the market and where it's going. And with that knowledge, he can help guide your company to do what it needs to do. So that's why I like next level. And uh, that's it, man. I got nothing else for you, Ronnie. If you want to get a hold of Ronnie, go to next level solutions, Inc. I N C.com. That's next level N X T L V L solutions, I N C.com. And Ronnie, we want to thanks for, uh, thanks for taking out the time to, Hang out with us, man. Appreciate no, man, it. I enjoyed it, man. Thanks, Dan. Man, it's been my pleasure, and thanks for having us on. Hey, man. Um, I wish you were coming to the fence show, but you're not. 
I'll see Ben, but I'll be catching up soon, man. I'm going to make my way out to Dallas. I got some uh, friends out there that I need to go check on. Old Magnolia Fence and Patio, Robert Whitaker. I want to go hang yeah. out with him for a weekend. So, Yeah, man. That'd be awesome, man. Did, hey, you, do you know Robert? Did you go to his office? Uh, yeah, we actually did do some work with uh, Robert. Uh, matter of fact, he was he came to Utah, I believe, and that's yeah. where originally that I met him. Um, and uh, I know that they were using the systems and stuff like that. So I did meet him, uh, and I do know him. Yeah, yeah, because I think uh, he did some on-site work there uh, at Magnolia Fence in Dallas, so or Fort Worth. He's in Fort Worth. Anyway, look, man, it was great having you on. Uh, we're going to have to have you on again. We'll come up with some more questions, and uh, hopefully we can help out the industry, man. I would so, love to know more. Thank you so much for having me, Dan. Hey, no problem. And, hey, guys, y'all keep on fencing. You've been listening to My Fence Life. Yes, we like to have fun. Beer, bourbon, and business. And although we have fun, we take our business very seriously. Dan Blanc is known as the Fence King, and he's been providing high-quality fence solutions since 1999. He's connected to industry leaders, business leaders, financing experts, and marketing gurus that will be on the show to talk about their success stories. To find out more about us, hit the website at myfencelife.com. Listen to the show wherever you consume your content. We are everywhere. Apple, Spotify, and Google Podcast. See you next time on My Fence Life.